Hello, and welcome to Comic Book Action Theater. My name is Rick Crabb, your host. And as I've said at the beginning of every episode since we've done this lately, hope everyone is healthy and safe. I know that some parts of the United States and, and the world regulations seem to be softening. and I'm hoping that you're able to do what you want to do, do what you need to do for yourself, for your family, all that good stuff. Hopefully we'll get through all this soon. Today we're going to talk about the Doctor Strange Old Time Radio series. Now some of you might not have even known that something like this even existed. I didn't know myself until a few years ago. This story, it's several levels of history behind not only the story itself, the radio station where it originated from, and a bunch of other details. Some of which I will actually leave links to in the comment section of this video. I won't even get into it because otherwise it'd be probably like a four or five hour video at least. But anyway, a lot of interesting stuff. Well, let's get right down to it. Basically, the Doctor Strange radio show started in 1967. Now, the thing with old time radio, it seemed like the heyday of it was like the late 30s and the early 40s, pretty much beginning and during World War II. As the war ended, as comic book, superhero comics were popular, they were waning in popularity after the war. As was superhero shows, as was radio audio dramas. You still had radio, you still have it today, but more so people were listening to it more for music and for news, for sporting events, that kind of thing. And a lot of your radio programs were kind of dying off. You. In fact, a lot of them with the invention of television, many of the popular radio programs became TV shows. In the superhero genre, Superman and Lone Ranger went to the small screen, as did shows like Gunsmoke, Dragnet, Perry Mason, even I Love Lucy had their roots in old-time radio, eventually made their way into television. Now, in the early 60s, there was a renaissance with superhero comics with both DC and the company at the time was... It's called Timely, which changed its name to Atlas, which then changed its name again to what we know it to today as Marvel. In the early 60s, editor Stan Lee and a few artists such as Steve Ditko and Jack Kirby created a laundry list of legendary superheroes that are now part of, many of them are part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but they all had their roots during this time. And shortly after that, in the mid-60s, you had a lot of superhero shows. Instead of being old-time radio dramas, they made their way to television. You had the hugely popular Batman TV series. And Marvel had some of their own characters on Saturday morning cartoons. You had, for example, you had a show called The Marvel Superheroes. Several stories with Captain America, the Hulk, the Thor, Namor, the Submariner. You also had the popular Spider-Man TV series on for a couple Years. Again, a Saturday morning cartoon. And the Fantastic Four even had their own cartoon from Hanna-Barbera. Good time to be a comic book fan. Good time, especially to be a fan of Marvel Comics in that day. So, the Doctor Strange show, how did that come about? It had its roots back in 1967 with a public radio station in New York called WBAI. Um, basically, it's what you would expect today as a as most public stations, usually college radio stations, they they generate their support by listeners, by donations, that kind of thing. An employee at that station, a gentleman by the name of Charlie Potter, he had been a fan of old time radio shows. He hadn't heard anything since nineteen fifty two, according to a recent interview. He wound up meeting with some friends at a another friend's apartment named Martin Gleitzman, who was a who was a, kind of an engineer and director at another radio station. They got together and recorded in the studio eventually 17 episodes of this show. Now, for some reason, there were only six of them available online. Um, you can you have access to all six of them on YouTube. There are a few vendors that can sell a compilation of those six episodes. That's what I did, basically. And... This particular program is going to have three episodes on there as well. Um, 
he pretty much he assembled the program with some actors and friends who worked at the radio stations themselves. Charlie himself was the voice of the Ancient One, for example. Part of Doctor Strange was played by a gentleman named Gary Huner. Someone named John Basis as the announcer. And then Martin Gleisman, the engineer that I just mentioned earlier, he was the voice of Mordo. I think he also did Dormammu and a few supporting characters too. An interesting thing about this, you may be wondering if how, if, how and when did they get permission for Marvel to do this. Well, basically they contacted Stan Lee. And Marvel's office happened to be down the street from where this studio was located at the time. Stanley not only gave his permission, but he actually went to their studio when they recorded their first episode, which was an episode of Doctor Strange fighting the villain Nightmare. And as a gift to the station, he had Marvel Comics donate to the station monetarily as well as give the rights to Doctor Strange to the station to do that show. So anyways, the first episode we're going to get into will be the origin episode of Doctor Strange. Now, what's interesting about this, if you have any issues of the early Doctor Strange comics from 1963, you will know that the origin story didn't appear until his third appearance. They did two Doctor Strange stories prior to that, and then they did the origin of Doctor Strange, which is also what they did with this radio series as well. I would imagine if you have copies of those issues, maybe like an essential Doctor Strange from that time period, you would probably be able to read along with that book with, as you hear the radio program. But anyway, without further ado, you're listening to the origin of Doctor Strange right here on Comic Book Action Theater. The Western world came to learn the ancient secrets of the occult. Our answer lies in the remote vastness of Asia. Come with us to Tibet, land of mystic enchantment, where we find a haggard figure entering a strangely peaceful chamber. I've searched for months, but now at last my quest has ended. You, old man, are you the one I seek? Are you called the Ancient One? Yes, I am the Ancient One. Then you're the one with the magic healing power? I need you. You have to help me. Be patient, child of the Western world. I heal none save those who deserve it. The power of my magic must never be wasted on the undeserving. First, you must prove you are worthy. You can't refuse me. I won't let you. I've traveled too far, waited too long. What? Stop. I will permit no act of violence here. None may lift a hand against the entrant one. He's holding me motionless above the ground just by a gesture. It's uncanny. And now I shall peer into your brain, into your memory, and learn the truth about you. As you in the past, in America, in a hospital, you were wearing the frock of a doctor. Ah, you were a famous sergeant named Stephen Strange. You were proud, haughty, successful, but you cared little for your fellow men. Brilliant operation, Strange. Oh, your patient wants to thank you. I can't be bothered. Just be sure he pays his bill. Money, that was all that interested you, all you cared about. Yeah. My mother's a cripple these days, and my younger brothers just won't make it if I can't get back on the job. Sorry, if you can't pay my price, I can't help you. Find another doctor. I don't take Medicaid patients. To you, the problems of others meant less than nothing. Hey, hey there he is. 
Dr. Strange, Joe Gibbon, Amalgamated Radio. What are the chances that you'll be joining the team of volunteer doctors leaving for Peru tonight? Sorry, I'm not interested in charity work. Dr. Strange, but with your skill, they might save thousands more lives. When they're willing to pay for my talent, I'll listen. Not until then. Now, if you'll let me through, my car's waiting. But what is this? The scene now changes. I see an auto accident on a lonely road. The victim is alive, but the, the victim is you. We got here just in time, Joe. Get an ambulance, quick. Uh, car 95, we got a crash here at 61, Highway 61. That's mile 7272. Send an ambulance, please. 10 4. 10 4. You recovered in due time. Your life was spared, but you suffered a terrible blow. Strange, I. I don't know how to tell you this. Speak up, man. I can take it. What did the x-rays show? Well, although your hands seem to be all right, the nerves have been severely damaged. You mean... Uh, I'm afraid no. so. You'll never be able to operate again. No. No, I don't believe you. You're lying. You must be lying. Stephen, even though you can't operate, you can work as a consultant. Never. Work as my assistant. Stephen Strange assists nobody. And so you went into seclusion. You spent your days brooding as bitterness filled your soul. You lost track of time and became a drifter little more than a human derelict. Then, one day in a dingy bar, you overheard two sailors. Yeah, I heard of the ancient one. They say you can cure anything by some magic power. Uh, if you ask me, I say it's just a legend. The ancient one. Many times in the past, I too have heard this name mentioned in whispers. Can it be that there is some truth to the legends? History tells us there have been men with certain powers. What if he is such a man? The rest is easy to deduce. You sought me for my healing power. But I cannot help you, for your motives are still selfish. And yet, I seem to see a spark within you. A spark of decency, of goodness, which I might be able to fan into a flame. There, I release you from your spell. If you stay here, study with me. Perhaps you will find within yourself the cure you seek. I should have known. It was just a waste of time. You're nothing but an old fraud. Your little parlor tricks don't impress me. I'm leaving. Say... Where'd that snow come from? It wasn't there before. I could never make it down the pass now. No. You will have to remain until it thaws. That snow wasn't your doing. Oh, what am I saying? Pretty soon I'll convince myself you do have magic powers. Naturally, man of the Western world. You must not allow yourself to believe in magic. It wouldn't be seemly. And now, Inasmuch as you must remain here until the snow thaws, my pupil Mordo will show you to your room. But weeks pass and the snows do not. Doctor Strange begins to explore the halls and chambers of the mountain retreat. Mordo, what a creepy looking character. All he does is study those scrolls and recite his dirges. What a waste of time. I should never have come here in the first place. I'll ask the old man if he knows how long it takes the snows to melt around here. Hmm, looks like he's asleep. Say, what's that vapor swirling around him? The vapors of Valtor. I am being attacked by an unseen enemy. The vapors were spawned by magic, and only magic can dispel them. 
I summon the powers of the Vesanti by the spell of the dread Dormammu. In the name of the all-seeing Agamotto, all thy powers I summon. At that very second, in a blinding flash of light, the swirling vapors vanish into nothingness. Be gone, forces of darkness. Whew. If I hadn't seen it, I'd never believe it. What was that? What did it mean? What force dispelled it? I cannot explain to a non-believer, but I must always be on guard. The forces of evil are ever pitted against me. Look, I'm not a surgeon anymore, but I'm still a doctor. I can see that you're weak. You're ill. You need rest. That is impossible. I must remain until I can find a successor. The evil forces must not be allowed here on Earth. If I stay much longer, I'll end up becoming a believer. I've got to get away before I become a part of this madness. The snows are almost gone. Maybe I'll be able to leave soon. Say, what's Mordo up to now? Dormammu, accept my incense offering. Let the force of your power descend upon my enemy. Let him feel your fatal touch, I beseech you, Dormammu. That doll surrounded by vapor. It looks familiar. Dormammu, do not fail me. Ah, the prying stranger has found me. You wonder what it is I do? It's a replica of the Ancient One. He's trying to slay him. Ah, his own pupil, Mordo. I'll tell you, because you are too weak to stop me. I have learned much more than the Ancient One suspects. And once he is slain, I shall be the only master of magic. You won't get away with it, Mordo. I'll tell him. He'll toss you out. Fool! <laughs> You think I am helpless? You think you can defeat my plan? Behold, see how easily I can cast a spell upon you. A spell which will prevent you from ever giving away my secret. A vapor is forming. From out of nowhere. It's coming towards me. It's formed itself into a clamp. Ah, run. I can't speak. I, I can't speak. But wait. It isn't really there. And yet I'm unable to speak. So there is such a thing as magic. And this is proof of it. But although I can't speak, I can still move. I'll... By the powers of darkness, I command you, weak, unknowing western dog. How helpless you are before the magic of the ancients. And now I shall finish with you. There. None can see your iron clamp or the force that surrounds your wrists. But you feel them. You know they are there. Later, after Mordo has left. It's probably nothing more than simple hypnotism. I won't let him stop me. I'll go to the ancient one and... Ah! Those bolts of pure force, they're trapping me. It was no bluff. Mordo does possess the power of magic. But what can I do? I've got to warn the Ancient One. I've got to save him. But how? Mordo's speaking to him now, and the Ancient One doesn't suspect a thing. You have shown much progress in your studies, my pupil. You have mastered many of the mystic arts. That is good, for I am eager to follow in your honored footsteps. No, I've got to warn him. Listen to me, I... I... Who dares intrude? It's you, the witless blunderer from the far western continent. If you have words to utter, speak. He knows I cannot. His spell is stopping me. Send him back to the new world, ancient one. There is no place for him here. How smug he is. He knows I can't even expose him. Oh, I've never hated anyone so much. And so, alone and helpless, Dr. Stephen Strange stands and broods. At last I see the power of sorcery. I cannot give up. Mordo must never be allowed to defeat the Ancient One. For if he should, what would happen to the world as we know it? 
I'm only subject to Mordo's spell if I try to warn the Ancient One. Yet I'm able to speak of other matters. So there's still one hope. If I too can learn the secrets of magic, then I can battle Mordo with his own weapons. Ancient One, a favor, please. I wish to accept the terms you offered me some days ago. I wish to study at your feet, to be taught your knowledge, to prove myself worthy of the mystic arts. Ah, at last I have reached the real Doctor Strange. I knew there was good within you, if I could but bring it to the surface. I accept you, my child. You shall be my disciple. First, I read you from Mordo's spell. So, <laughs> now you are free to speak, to act, even as before. You mean you knew of Mordo's spell? Of course. The pupil can have no secret from his master. But although he is evil, I prefer to keep Mordo here, where I can control him, rather than banish him. One day, my son, when I am gone, it will be your task to battle Mordo, to the finish. You have been tested, and you have passed your baptism of fire. But the path ahead of you would be difficult, and fraught with danger. Do you still wish to continue? Yes, Ancient One, I do wish to continue. And so it began. The days passed into weeks, to months, to years, as Doctor Strange studied the long-dead mystic arts. Slowly he changed. Slowly his life took on a new, deeper meaning. Slowly he prepared himself for the epic battles ahead, the battles which could only be won by Doctor Strange. Be with us again next time for more of the occult adventures of Doctor Strange, master of the mystic arts. You just heard the origin of Doctor Strange here in Comic Book Action Theater. We'll now proceed to a two-part episode. They did a few of these. Pretty much they were cliffhangers, much like the old-time radio shows, and much like the stories in the comics. This particular story was a two-parter. And there were a lot of things from Doctor Strange that a lot of fans take for granted that originated in this episode. For example, this was the first time you actually saw all of Dormammu. Usually, in previous stories, you just saw a flaming head. He just looked like the human torch on like a magical video screen that Mordo would speak to. You also saw the introduction of Clea, a love interest throughout the comics, and someone who was involved in some plot lines later on down the road. And prior to this story... Doctor Strange, he had the Eye of Almogado, but he didn't have all of his powers or his weapons yet. He actually receives his Cloak of Levitation in the story. That's how it proceeded in the comics. I know in the Doctor Strange movie, he got everything all at once, pretty much. He got them all in the same episode, but not here. This one, basically the Ancient One gave him his cloak after he fought. Probably the most powerful villain in the universe. Why he waited till then, I have no idea. But anyway, that's Marvel and Steve Ditko and Stan Lee for you. Don't ask me. But anyway, we will play parts one and two of Doctor Strange versus the Dread Dormammu right here on Comic Book Action Theater. call him Doctor Strange and speak his name in whispers. It's daytime in the city and unsuspecting men go about their work. The astral body of Doctor Strange, tired from travel and travail in distant lands, casts no shadow as it glides almost silently towards the Master's retreat there to rejoin his physical form. <sighs> the 
is good to be home again. Now I can rest, knowing that Mordo will not trouble me for a long time. But no sooner does the man of mystery regain his mortal body than he finds himself in the grip of a powerful spell. What? I, only one man has the power to cast this spell, but why? Suddenly, halfway around the world, Doctor Strange receives his answer. Guruji, say no more, my child. We are not alone. I have called you for a very special reason. Look to your left through the eye of the amulet and tell me what you see. A spirit form? An Ifrit? Does he dare to menace you, Master? No, no, my pupil. He is merely a messenger from the dread Dormammu. Dormammu? The most powerful of the dwellers of the disputed dimension? What does he want of us? Many years ago, that dimension was called Disputed, but his name is no longer suitable, for Dormammu is its sole master. Were he content with that, you could rest, Stephen, but now he plans to enter the dimension of men. Yet I am too aged, too weary to stop him. Say no more, my teacher. I shall confront him. My child, my child, were it not for his slaves such as this Ifrit here, Dormammu might not even perceive your attack, though you hurled your most powerful spells. Then please, Master, dispatch him at once to announce me to Dormammu. Ah, it is what I hoped you would say, my pupil. Be gone then at once. You know I'll answer. You will regret this day, both of you. That spirit was itself once a lord in their world. Even as Dormammu's slave, he retains awesome powers. Their world is fraught with dangers. In the end, you will need more than I have taught you, for even I, at the height of my power, was unable to defeat Dormammu. Now, though surprise avails you not, Shela, you must depart at once. Take care you meet Dormammu neither before nor long after his messenger returns. It were best you fought him while his anger can help as well as crush you. May Rudra prepare you away. With incredible speed, the aged hands of the master form the complex mudras of a spell, and Doctor Strange is transported as swiftly as he was summoned. Quickly, the pulsating begins to cease, and a dreadful world takes form. The world of the mindless ones, the world of the dread Dormammu. The journey was short. Would that I could find the ruler of this world as quickly. Perhaps with the amulet. But as Doctor Strange sets out across the scorched gray wastes of the Dark Domain, he is watched by zealous eyes of Dormammu's messenger, who has lingered in returning to his lord. So, it was wise to wait. It will be easy to defeat you. And though I have never battled a mortal before, it will give me great pleasure to slay you and earn me great favor with my master as well. Prepare to die! Recognizing the messenger, Doctor Strange feels victory more than defeat and meets the attack with defense alone. And yet elsewhere in this world, other slaves have detected his arrival and have fulfilled their duty to Dormammu. I saw myself, and by his amulet, I could see that he is not the Ancient One, sire, but the pupil. What is this flesh? How can it so rise to mock me? Where is the Ancient One? Can mortality excuse him such an insult to my dignity? You have done well. It is his pupil. I can now sense his presence. Go there, subdue the Efreet, and bring them both to me. Yes, sire. His disciple. It will not do. I would be demeaned by such combat. There can be but one answer. 
the ancient one knows I cannot be stopped in my own dimension. So he sends his disciple to draw me forth in haste. Then he can battle me on earth while his rotting powers still exist. How can such dust be so presumptuous? I have beaten him before, and very soon we shall meet again with Earth as pride. On the wasted plain outside, the battle between Doctor Strange and the Ifrit takes a sudden turn. Mamu knows more than you can find words to suggest. He sends for you. You too, sorcerer. Come with me or be dragged. Eager to retain what strength he has left, the master of the mystic arts remains silent, and soon he and the Afrit are brought into the presence of Dormammu. So... you return at last, my swift messenger and what is the news you bring the ancient one my lord the ancient one refuses to face me but sends his pupil instead and do you think that I send you that all this might transpire unbeknownst to me. I could have entered their world and scotched this vile mockery, but you... Mercy, sire! I only sought to relieve you of the indignity of slaves! Enough of your lies. You sought above all to gratify your whims. It were better you had sought to aid him. I cast you out to the land beyond the barrier. You are not worthy of the protection I grant my slaves. <laughs> Should I call on him again, he will not linger. And now, mortal, speak up. Let us have your message. I have no message, but speak for myself. You are forbidden to enter the dimension of men under penalty of Enough. death. Enough. None may speak thus in the presence of Dormammu. Where is your master? Summon him at once. You'll have to deal with me first. You wish to attack the Ancient One. It cannot be done while I am still alive. You dare continue in this fashion? You are a bold fool. But you would do better to play the messenger. For then you might save your worthless life. That is not my first concern, but rather that I protect Earth. Then you shall live only long enough to see your world my captain. I shall hold you until then. With incredible force, the spells of Dormammu leap forward at the magician, and the swirling fires in his eyes and mouth seem only to burn brighter with the effort. 
Shielding himself with the amulet, Doctor Strange attempts a counter. I call upon the vapors of Valtor. <laughs> but the swirling mist never reaches its objective, and the master of the mystic arts is thrown back by the spells opposing him, and the center of his perception splits open wide and swallows him. Consider this well as you lie in limbo, sorcerer. If you would save your world, you must first defeat Dormammu. But this cannot be done. If you agree to summon your master here, you may live on as you do now, my slave. If not, you will die when I have done with him and your world. Consider this well indeed. Alone in an alien dimension, captive of the most powerful of the lords of black magic, Doctor Strange is about to fight the battle of his life, and the fate of the world is at stake. Be with us next time for the exciting conclusion of this episode of Doctor Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts. Strange, and speak his name in whispers. In the first half of this episode, you'll recall that Doctor Strange was overcome and cast into limbo by Dormammu, ruler of the Dark Dimension. Alone and unaided and seemingly helpless to prevent Dormammu from invading the domain of men, the master of the mystic arts considers his predicament and the fate of the world should he fail to defeat this awesome enemy. Never since the accident have I felt so helpless, so unprepared. Nothing in my training has given me the power to understand, let alone to defeat such an adept as this Dormammu. And the amulet seems almost to potentiate his spells. What was it the Ancient One said? In the end, you will need more than I have taught you. There must be a way. But even as Doctor Strange floats in helpless contemplation, the ether before him begins to coalesce, and a woman of noble bearing appears to the magician. Heed my words, man from another world. You must not battle Dormammu. You waste your breath. Nothing can prevent this from happening. I don't fear death in the service of the men of my world. In fact, I have come to expect it. But why do you seek to aid me? Do not misunderstand me, sorcerer. I feel your victory more than your defeat. I watched your duel with the dreaded one. You were already tired when you met him, yet no one in this dimension has ever taxed his powers as you did. I am thinking that if by some miracle you managed to defeat Dormammu, it could mean the end of us. Us? Of whom are you speaking? Who are you? I am called Clea, one of Dormammu's myriad slaves. I speak for others like myself. I'm afraid I don't understand. Then you must be shown. Prepare yourself for such sights as have never before been witnessed by human eyes. With a mere gesture, the woman causes the random shimmerings of the void to converge, forming images and sounds of another place. This is only the start of the eerie spectacle you are about to behold. These are the outskirts of Dormammu's domain, where the mindless ones dwell. The mindless ones? Yes. 
see there, beyond. They are primitive, savage, totally deprived of intelligence or the finer sentiments of kindness and love. They seem to have quite highly developed powers. Do they not destroy each other with their energy bolts? No, for to do so, they would only destroy what seeks to destroy in turn. They have lived in this dimension since time immemorial, always striving to kill us and to ruin all that we cherish. Look out! They have seen us. I must destroy the image. Only one thing contains them. A psychic barrier maintained by Dormammu encircling his entire domain. Without this, he would have no slaves, no land worth ruling. Hmm. So while Dormammu is a menace to mankind, he is nonetheless a protector to his own people. You speak of saving the men of your world, but in what way are they different from the men of Dormammu's? That is why you must not defeat him, mortal. Only Dormammu can save us from the mindless ones. Meanwhile, in another dimension, distant only by a fault in the layers of time, other men consider the outcome of the titanic duel which is about to take place between Doctor Strange and the Dread Dormammu. <laughs> and yet, all things considered, it doesn't seem to me that this news is to be laughed at, Mordo. Miss Strange is indeed a fool. He has no knowledge of such power as Dormammu wields. Through his stupidity, I may yet defeat the Ancient One and... It is good that you have come and told me this, my friend. But do not fear. Return to your world and observe what transpires. Do not fail to give my fondest respects to your lord. I will do so at once. And for the service, you will grant me refuge in this world should the sorcerer defeat Dormammu? Of course. But it is as I have told you. This meddler is not as powerful as you fear. He has only eluded me by the most phenomenal luck and the use of his amulet. But you say this serves him little against the dreaded one. At least it appeared to be the case as they fought. Very well, then. I shall do as you bid. Another fool loose in the ether. Dormammu will surely win, and Earth will be his. Yet he will need a governor. I shall rule Earth yet, and more if all goes well. Unaware of Mordo's plan, Doctor Strange still lies captive in the void of the Dark Dimension. Alone once again, he considers the appeal made by Clea and the outcome of the final confrontation with Dormammu. To save both worlds, I would have to defeat Dormammu and then recreate the barrier. It's absurd. I could never control that much energy, even if I could find its source. Besides, I will need all of my strength to defeat Dormammu. And this much must be done. Hardly has the magician spoken these words when his body is hurtled through space by the force of an unsuspected spell. Come, bear no flesh and bones. The time is here. Dormammu and Clea. What have you done? She is merely transfixed. She knew the penalty for speaking to you, an enemy. She has betrayed me, and thus hastens your doom as well as her own. But she was only trying to help your subjects. To convince me not to fight. What could be wrong with this? Silence. I promised you a reprieve, sorcerer. But your conspiracy.
jealousy has angered me beyond all measure. You will both die. But which of you will die first? And which will have to witness the monstrous death? Namo Vakam, Rumo Nayana, Ramani Yaya Parayos. What is this? Kavasmai Davanvaya Kavate. Doctor Strange has taken the offensive, rolling one spell after another. Dormammu is temporarily surprised by so sudden acceleration of the sequence of anticipated events, and he counters wildly, initially missing the magician. May the fire of Agni release her from your spell. Ah. <laughs> your fatal mistake, mortal. I have to been told of your self-effacing oath. But by my power, the spell will hold and you will die. Calling upon ever greater spells, Dormammu begins to close upon his opponent. The deadly vortices of power strike further and further into his defenses. Then, in apparent desperation, Doctor Strange attempts a ruse. Observe, Dormammu. You attack a mere projection. I am here behind you. Skillful, but useless. I can see that you are neither of these visions, but their common reflection in the air. Useless. I have powers enough to wither them all. But unknown to Dormammu, while Doctor Strange draws more and more of his energy, the psychic barrier surrounding the Dark Domain has begun to weaken. The mindless ones rapidly sense the vulnerability of the once protected realm. With great speed, they begin to pour into the center of the Domain, destroying all in their path, until finally their rampage comes to the attention of their preoccupied overlord. The mindless ones are free. Hold mortal. Other lives than yours are at stake. Surely you will grant such a truce. I shall take no advantage of you during this period. May the wings of Ragador contain of the amulet. May its power be one with that of Dormammu. Strengthened by the mystic power of the amulet, Dormammu's spell becomes more and more effective until at last the mindless ones are held and forced back. The spell holds. The barrier is complete. But you, sorcerer, you have presumed a great deal. I curse the fact that I needed your help. I curse the fate that has placed me in your debt. Everyone has his weaknesses, Dormammu. I suspected all along that your pride would force you to honor such a debt. What will you have, vile carrion? Wealth, power, Perhaps this woman... The woman's well. freedom and safety. And a promise, dreaded one. You must vow never to enter the dimension of Earth. Ever. Oh, so be it. But I shall never rest until I have avenged this indignity. Never. <laughs> A short time later, high in the mountains of Tibet, Doctor Strange confers once again with his aged master. So if this is correct, Guruji, Mordo has already signed such a pact with the dreaded one? This is what I fear, my child. And so once again you must not take the rest you so desire. 
But for greater deeds, you will need greater powers, and you have earned them. I give you my cloak of levitation. Fly cloak. I pray I may be found my worthy of this. My you have already been found worthy. Now go, for I must meditate. May the Vishanti protect you, my Chela. And so the shadow of the magician darts across the globe, while ordinary men, ignorant of the danger averted, go about their affairs. Be with us again next time for more of the occult adventures of Dr. Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts. just heard Doctor Strange versus the Dread Dormammu right here on Comic Book Action Theater. Before we wrap things up, I want to include some bonus footage that I found when I purchased this compilation. Apparently, when they recorded the second episode of the Dormammu story, they caught some footage of a show that came on after the Doctor Strange show. Sounds like they did a show called Nuff Said which was a discussion, basically a talk show about Marvel Comics. If you're familiar with the TV show The Walking Dead, you might know that they have another program that usually comes on after the episode of The Walking Dead called The Talking Dead, where they have a panel discussion about the episode, usually with actors and directors, members of the cast, and some celebrities, that kind of thing. Well, it sounds like they did the same thing here with this particular show on WBAI called Enough Said. They even got Stan Lee to do a bumper, as you'll hear shortly. I wish I could find out if they have any more episodes of this show. It sounds like it would be an interesting talk show in itself. If I am able to find it, I'll put it on here, but I'm not sure if it exists. But anyway, we'll play some bonus footage with the first few minutes of the WBAI Enough Said Marvel Comics talk show right here on Comic Book Action Theater. And then after that, Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Well, that about wraps it up for tonight. This is likely to be our last show in monaural sound. I'm sure you'll want to catch some of these effects in stereo. So don't forget to tune in again in two weeks when Dr. Strange will hopefully go to Hong Kong. And if he does, we'll see you there. The radio is produced by Charles Potter with technical effects by David Rapkin. In the cast tonight, you heard Archie Altman, Martin Gleitzman, Beth Latimer, Gene Moore, Charles Potter, David Wilson, and yours truly, John Basis. Thanks for letting us into your living room. Good night. This is Stan Lee, and you're listening to Nuff Said on good old WBAI New York. A sulky, over funky, kind of hulky superhero. A two fisted and electrically transistored superhero. An exotically neurotic and aquatic superhero. The Marvel superheroes have arrived. Super powered from the forehead to the toes. Watch them change their very shape before you know. Viking superhero change to Viking superhero. Ah, I'm singing real, swinging shield, blinging superhero. They're the latest, they're the greatest, ultimate superhero. The Marvel superhero. Yes, they've arrived, and that was yeah. the theme for the Marvel Superhero Show. Zinger and shield slinging. <laughs> shield slinging superheroes. And Aquatic and erotic? <laughs> Which one was the erotic superhero? I don't know. Namor. He's running around in his underwear. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, he ran around kind of stiff Ooh, all the what? time. <laughs>
like a fish out of water. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, on that show, you know, the, 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 the animation... They